In the last video, we saw that mirror images of each other can actually be different molecules that we called stereoisomers, and, spe and specifically enantiomers. We need a way to tell those enantiomers apart, and the system used is called the RS system for describing the absolute configuration of a chirality center. This system was designed by three guys named Kahn, Ingold, and Prelog. So these are the steps to figure out uh, whether a molecule is R or S in terms of its absolute configuration. And the first step is to prioritize the four groups attached to your chirality center. So here I have a molecule, and let's go ahead and number this molecule. So let's number, let's number the molecule. We'll make this number carbon number one. We'll make this carbon number two, carbon number three, and carbon number four. So we haven't done nomenclature of alcohols yet, but with an OH group at carbon two, this molecule is called 2-butanol. So this is 2-butanol. Let's identify all chirality centers on this molecule. So in the last video, this is what we spent a lot of time in. We looked for chirality centers as being an sp3 hybridized carbon with four different groups attached to it. And at carbon 2, that meets the criteria, because carbon 2 ha is an sp3 hybridized carbon that has a methyl group attached to it, an ethyl group attached to it, an OH group attached to it, and then there's also a hydrogen here. So it's an sp3 hybridized with four different groups attached to it, so that makes this carbon a chirality center. So that's our chirality center. So we identified our chirality center. Let's go ahead and draw the two stereoisomers uh, for 2-butanol. So molecules that have the, the, same, the same connection of atoms, but they differ in three dimensions. So let's go ahead and draw one of them. So I'm going to draw 2-butanol. I'm going to choose to have the OH group coming out at me like that. So I have the OH group coming out at me, and then therefore I must have a hydrogen going away from me in space. So that's one possible stereoisomer for 2-butanol. To get the other stereoisomer, I could reflect this molecule in a mirror. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's reflect this molecule in a mirror. And so let's go ahead and draw my mirror here, and let's see what we would get. So I'm going to have a hydrogen here, and then that hydrogen is connected to this carbon, and then this carbon must go like that, an OH group coming out at me. And then I have an ethyl group on this side. So that is 2-butanol reflected in a mirror. So how do I tell these two molecules apart? They're both 2-butanol. There's a chirality center. So these, these are, these are non-superimposable mirror images. They are enantiomers of each other. Let's go through the steps and let's figure out which one of these two is R and which one of these two is the S enantiomer. So let's look at the steps. Prioritize the four groups attached to your chirality center by atomic number. So we need, uh, we need to refresh our memory about atomic number, and so we have our a little mini periodic table right here. So let's, let's look at the groups attached to my chirality center. So I know that this is my chirality center right here, and this is my chirality center. So what is the atom directly attached to that carbon? So attached to this carbon, there is an oxygen, a hydrogen, a carbon, and a carbon. So we're going to assign priority in terms of atomic number. So if I look over here, I can see out of those different atoms, oxygen has the highest atomic number of eight, then carbon with six, and then hydrogen with one. So oxygen is going to get the highest priority. So I'm going to go ahead and assign a number one priority there to that oxygen. What gets the second highest priority? Well, I have a tie so because I have two carbons. So let's just move on to, to the one that's at least priority, which is hydrogen. So this hydrogen here would get a four. So now I have to figure out what gets a two and what gets a three, because I have a tie here for my two carbons. So that's a tie. You go to the atoms that that carbon is connected to. So let's go ahead and draw in the atoms connected to this carbon. This carbon here is connected to two hydrogens, and it's connected to a carbon. This carbon right here is connected to three hydrogens. So if I were to go ahead and write those out, the carbon on the left is connected to, directly connected to carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. The carbon on the right is connected to hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Which one of those two gets higher priority? Use the first point of difference rule again. And the first point of difference comes in with the very first atom, because carbon has a higher atomic number than hydrogen. So 
the 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 uh, the ethyl group on the left is going to get a number two priority. So this is going to get a number two priority, and the one on the right is going to get a number three priority. So we move back up here to our rules. Number two, the steps orient group. So the lowest priority group is projecting away from you. So lowest priority group is projecting away. Lucky for us, we already have that. Hydrogen is my lowest priority group, and it is projecting away from me. So I move on to the next step of assigning absolute configuration. Determine whether the sequence one, two, three is clockwise or counterclockwise. If it's clockwise, it is it is considered to be the R enantiomer. If it is counterclockwise, it is the S. R comes from the Latin word rectus, which means right, and S comes from the Latin word sinister, which means to the left. So let's look at the example that we have here, and let's see what kind of sequence we have for one, two, and three. So I have one, two, and three, and if I look at the way one, two, and three are going, right, I can ignore four, I can see that one starts here, and then two and three. So I'm going around this way. I'm going around this way, which is clockwise on a, on a clock with minutes and seconds hands. So it, it is going clockwise. So once again, I go up here and I see that clockwise tells me that is the R enantiomer. So on the left, if I were to name the molecule on the left, I wouldn't just write 2-butanol. I would write R-2-butanol. So let's go ahead and do that. So on the left, this is actually R in parentheses 2-butanol. If I look at its mirror image, I've already assigned priorities here. So I can say that the OH is going to get highest priority, the ethyl group is going to get second highest priority, and the methyl group is going to get third highest priority. So when I see, when I see, and then this is fourth priority, and it's going away from me, so I don't have to worry about my hydrogen anymore. When I move to step three, I can see that one, two, three is going around this way, which is counterclockwise. And counterclockwise will get an S for its absolute configuration. So since this one is going around counterclockwise, this would be S2-butanol. So R2-butanol and S2-butanol are enantiomers of each other. They are non-superimposable mirror images. And so we have to designate their absolute configuration in three dimensions. What would be another way to represent S2-butanol? Well, another way of doing it, instead of drawing a mirror, I could have just I could have just taken the molecule on the left, so let's go ahead and draw the, the basic structure for the molecule on the left. And then instead of having my OH go out at me, like I did on the left, I could have my OH going away from me. So if I draw my OH going away from me, this will actually also turn out to be S2-butanol. So this will be the mirror image. And if the OH is going away from me, then my hydrogen is coming out at me like that. So these two on the right, these are both S2-butanol. And if you have your molecular model set, you can go ahead and make them, and you can go ahead and prove that. So let's, let's think about um, assigning priority to this molecule over here on the right. So I know that this is my chirality center right here. And therefore, I could go ahead and make my, my, my oxygen get highest priority, my ethyl group get second highest priority, and my methyl group get third highest priority, and my hydrogen get fourth highest priority. And if I wanted to assign an absolute configuration from this drawing, I go back up to my rules, and I say, OK, well, I went ahead and assigned priority by atomic numbers, I move to number two. Orient the group so that the lowest priority group is projecting away from you. If I look at the, the drawing that I have here, my lowest priority group is the hydrogen, but it's not projecting away from me. This hydrogen is, is projecting towards me. So I'll go ahead and fill that in so you can see that. So my lowest priority group is not projecting away from me. If you want to assign absolute configuration, you need to rotate it so that lowest let that hydrogen, that lowest priority group is going away from you. So you could actually do that. And, and obviously, that's this drawing over here on the left. So again, these these two these two drawings are the exact same. So if you if you took the molecule on the right and you rotate it so the hydrogen is going away from you, you would see that is S2 butanol over here on the left. So again, use your molecular models, do that, prove it to yourself. It's relatively easy to do with small molecules like this, but for molecules that are larger, it's actually kind of hard to do this rotation. So I have a little trick that I use to figure out the absolute configuration when hydrogen is is coming out at me. I usually don't 
don't rotate it so the hydrogen is pointing away from me. What I do is, is go ahead and assign your priorities, one, two, three, four. And then I ignore the hydrogen for a second, and I think, OK, what way is this rotating? I say, OK, it's going one, two, three. It's going this way. It's going, it's going clockwise. So this would be R. So, I, I put, so this would be R, except for the fact that hydrogen is coming out at me when it really should be going away from me. So when I do this, and I say it's R, and I see a hydrogen coming out at me, I just automatically switch it to S. And you'll be right every time when you do that. So this is, this is S. So let me go ahead and write S here. So this is S2-butanol. So both of these are S2-butanol. You can use either one of those tricks. You, you can either rotate the molecule so the hydrogen is going away from you, as in step two, and then go ahead and figure out your clockwise or counterclockwise. Or you could go ahead and do clockwise or counterclockwise, and then take the opposite if your hydrogen is coming out at you. So in the next video, we'll look at uh, the RS system uh, for rings.